In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do your whole design of everything you need to draw to get your results. And we're focusing on the, on the water system in this video. So to get started uh, in the plumbing workspace, and you just got this very simple user interface here, which um, I won't go through now. I think I touch on pretty much everything as I, as I do this example project. So first thing to start with, I normally go with the flow source. So you can choose whatever system you want to design with here. I'll leave it on cold water for now. And yeah, if you want the flow source, we'll click on that one. And then we can just drop that on the, on the drawing wherever we want it. So I'll go here, just opposite the water meter room. Now, pretty typical of H2X is that everything you draw has properties and that's what informs the calculations that to happen in the background. So for the flow source, what it's wanting to know here was what is the pressure at that point? So the starting point in the system. So I'll just make this up, but you'd get it from the utility usually. So you've got the residual pressure, which is used to do all your peak pressure loss calculations. And then you've got your static pressure, which is more for your non-peak demands. Um, I'll just go with 450. And then for the height, so the floor's at 15, if we remember from earlier. So I'll, um, I'll put this at 14, just assume it's a meter below ground. All right, after this, I normally start then adding like uh, different bits of plant and things. Um, so we can start with the, the hot water plant here. So um, choose it from the drop down menu. And again, when you click on that, it's got properties. So you choose what the system coming in is and what the system coming out is. Um, you can change the name. You can change the height that the pipe connects. That'll make a bit more sense shortly, but I'll, I'll change it to two. For the return system part of it, so that we've set the outlet temperature 65 in the flow system settings earlier. So it automatically applies a delta T of five. Uh, the velocity comes from the settings as well. So you can override these if you want to, but I'll leave them the same. You can connect gas to it, which I won't do in this video, but this is where you can change the gas consumption. And then lastly, you change the uh, the width and height here as well, just so it looks a bit more realistic. We do also have Reams hot water plant built in. So if you go with that option, it will uh, give you all the size and gas requirements uh, results for it as well. But yeah, next, so we've got the hot water plant there. So I know there is um, on the roof here, we've got a tank and a pump room as well. So coming back to this drop down menu, Suck the tank, and we can rotate that with the arrows on the keyboard. And you've got very similar properties. So what, what you want on the inlet, what you want on the outlet, change the name. Again, change the height, so I can go with two. It brings the pressure to zero. If you wanted to add a little bit more pressure, maybe there's like 20 kPa for the two meters of height, you can do. Um, and then yeah, just change the, change the dimensions as well. All right, and because we've got a tank, we'll then need a pump. So exactly the same, very similar settings. The main one here is the pump pressure. So I usually just leave that at zero. When we go to results, see how little pressure we have in the fixtures and come back and change it. But um, you can also just put a placeholder in as well. So maybe like 400 KPA and just change it as well. Change the size. And then if you have anything like filters, uh, water softener or anything like that, you can also create your own custom plant, which I won't need here, but give it a name, enter some pressure loss, um, tell it what, what pipes you want to connect to it. And yeah, you, you can pretty much make anything that you want to with that. All right. So next we'll, um, we got the riser here. So we've got cold water going up to the tank. So I'll uh, choose this riser here. We've also got cold water coming down from the tank. So I'll put another one in. And then we're gonna have the hot water flow and return as well. So I'll uh, do one and another one as well. So flow and return. <clears throat> and then for the bottom heights, I'll leave it for now, but you can, just, you can set the bottom and the top heights that you want. So if you didn't want it to go up to the roof, you gotta override this and say, I don't want it to go more than two meters above level one, which would then mean can see it on level one 
but it's not visible on the roof because it's stopped a meter below. Um, so I won't do that for now, but uh, that is where you can change all that information. All right, and then the next part of it is, before we start drawing the pipes, is showing the fixtures. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can show the fixtures or you can show the nodes. Fixtures are good for more detailed designs and nodes are better for like concept designs. So I'll, just an example, I'll do the fixtures on ground floor and we'll do the nodes on level one. But uh, the way it works, just pick your fixture here. So basin, rotate with the arrows on the keyboard. And you just want to place this on top of where the architect shows them. So we've got these four here. So the way this works is these fixtures have loading units assigned to them so that as the pipes connect to them, the loading units can be recognized through the pipes. And then that is then converted to flow rates using the peak flow rate calculation method. And then uh, that's how, once you've got the flow rate and the pipe size, you work out velocities and pressure drops and things like that. All right, so I've added the fixtures. Next thing to do is start drawing the pipes. So um, I'll just start from the flow source and we'll just go through the whole building. So these are the three pipes we saw in the flow system settings before. So we had the riser, which we've already used, the copper pipe, and then the PEX pipe as well. So um, just to show you the hotkeys, I can just click P now, and that selects the pipe. When I hover over things, they highlight so I can tell that they're going to be connected to. So there we go, connected to the flow source. I'm just in the way in the bottom left here, but you can see the height's minus one. That's because we set the flow source at 14 and the floor's at 15. So if I want to bring that up now, I can use the arrows on my keyboard. So if I'm pressing up on my keyboard and you look at the height there in the bottom left, you can see that height is changing. So if we just put that as one meter, it's now raised off the ground a meter above the floor. And I can connect that to the riser. We can also come back and uh, change that as well. So if we wanted to change it, you could uh, you can do it in after drawing it all. But once you get in the hang of it, you can just use it. Sorry, change it using the arrows on your keyboard. So if we just follow this riser now up to uh, level one. And yeah, connect to it. And uh, yeah, start connecting it all up. So you can, it snaps the centers as well, which is handy for getting things uh, lined up. So this height's at 0.75. I'll just change it to say 2.75 and we'll bring that down now and we'll come back to this area but if we just follow that back down to ground floor and we can start drawing this layout as well so I'll just do this and we can clean it up later if we needed and I'll just snap here so it finds it and it connects all right, next, so I want to start drawing hot pipes. So I can click H on my keyboard, if you keep an eye up here, change it to hot, P for pipe, and just start drawing this now. So flow, flow and return. If you're just doing a dead leg, just bring it out in the middle and connect everything together. If you're doing flow and return, flow comes in the center here and return comes back down here. Um, so I'll start running this loop now, but I'll uh, step this pipe up uh, two. Whoops, pretty high. Run it two point eight. So we can just do do a flow and return system here that we might think is about right. And then if it's ever hard to snap on something, there's no problem with just running past it, and then you can come connect to it. We'll just bring that back here, and you can just delete that then. Um, so we've done a bit of coordination here and that's all the flow and return connected up on this level. If it's not quite right, you can just drag and drop a few things. If you wanted to extend it out, you can do. And uh, if you want to move all three, we can do that as well. Um, all right, so I'll just do the next level as well before we go any further. So I'll we'll start drawing these pipes again. So C and P for the cold pipe. And we'll bring that down here and hop. Uh, do the same. So this is a quick uh, flow return system, nice and simple. Just comes in and out there like that. Uh, 
All right, and in this area, this is where we're going to use nodes instead of uh, instead of fixtures. So for the nodes, we can go back to the settings that we saw before, and we just have to think what we want to make. So we'll uh, create a new fixture group, uh, call it bathroom. Done this before. And then just type in what the minimum pressure you want to achieve there is, and what the maximum is as well. And if you go outside that range, you'll, um, we'll see some warnings in the results. Um, but it was three basins, four WCs. So we can create that one. And I'll also create one for that sink as well, which there it is. So sink, putting the pressures that I'm looking for. You can create as many as you want. Limit. They now appear. So we've got bathroom. So we can literally just show those. Just snap it, it's equal. Show those there. Um, Take into the loading units for all those fixtures. I've also got the sink over here as well. If it crosses over, you can just move them around as well. So much quicker to do it that way, as you can probably tell, especially if you've got a lot of the same fixtures. Um, all right, and then on, on the roof, let's say we've got some um, mechanical air handling unit and some cooling towers as well. So we can bring the pipe across here. Um, and we'll supply these areas. So if you've got a cooling tower, like a continuous flow rate that you just want to add on to the um, to the peak demand of all the fixtures, yeah, use the continuous flow here. And you can just type that in, so we can give it a name, cooling tower. It's two liters per second. And then we can also do one over here for the air handling unit. So if this isn't continuous flow and you don't want to add it directly on, you can use the fixture node, which looks like this. And I'd recommend using this if you've ever got any fixtures. So I'll call this one AHU. But say if you had a safety shower or something else unusual that doesn't come standard, use the fixture node, just give it some loading units. Uh, like we've got 10 here. Um, but that also works if you've got like a future fit out area, just put a node in there, type in the units you want to allow for, and it will um, get diversified as well. All right, so last bit of pipe work to draw now is to connect these up. So we've got like valves, like the RPZs, TMVs, tempering valves to choose from. So I'll go with the TMV. That will snap to the nearest pipes just to save you having to draw them. And then you can use the PEX pipe here if you want to start connecting all this up. But we've got a really cool feature that'll save you a lot of time. If you right click and drag and drop a box over everything that you want to connect together, so nine objects here, eight fixtures, one TMV, click auto connect. It will run those pipes in the most efficient route possible or that it interprets as the most efficient route. So if it goes over a doorway, it won't recognize that. But looking at fixture orientations, it makes a best guess, really. And you can see here with this symbol, just to show the pipe, it's recognized that there's most likely um, a room here. So it's gone up into the ceiling, come across, and drop back down. And you can edit this if you want to make changes to that layout. You, you can um, leave, it like it <clears throat> leave it like it is for now. And then if you're just connecting, say if hot's coming straight, to the fixture, you can just hold control, connect the hot, cold, and fixture objects, auto connect, and it will just run those pipes straight across. So, uh, really efficient. And then we can just delete that, bring this in, and uh, we're pretty good with all the pipe layouts now. The last thing you'd want to do to complete this is to start adding valves to the design. So, I won't do them all, but just as an example, maybe we'll do this area here. We've got a lot of valves for you to choose from. So for example, if you want to put some uh, ball valves over here by the water meter, we can do. And likewise, if you want to put some on the inlets and outlets, on the connections to the risers, you're of course uh, able to do that. We'll leave it like that for now. Um, strainers, if you've got a strainer here, water meter, and I'll add an RPZ. The reason for doing this is just to add pressure loss to your system. So it just means your results are more accurate. If you're doing a very early concept design, then 
yeah, it's probably not worth adding them. But uh, as you get more detailed, it definitely makes sense too. And then you just also want to add a balance involved to every hot water loop that you add. So we've got two loops here. We've got the one on this level and the one from above. So I'm going to just add that here. Two balancing valves. A few more of them. And simple as that, really. You can go through and you could add them to, to the two other levels, but that's repetitive. But, um, you know, I might want to add an RPZ over here and lots of isolation valves, which, of course, you're more than welcome to. And then just a couple little things that will help when you're designing. So, as I mentioned earlier, like the, these all have the loading units assigned to them and minimum maximum pressures. Let's say you only wanted to achieve 100 kPa at the basins and you wanted them to be two loading units for whatever reason. If you didn't want to override them all at once, you can right click, select similar, and that will select every version of that on the level. And you can just, you can make a wholesale change. So maybe for the cold water, we want two loading units and we only want to achieve 100 kPa. And that will now in, in, um, relate to all the different calculations. And you'll see it's gone yellow. So that's because as a manager reviewing this, you're aware that the properties of that has been overridden. So you can just give it a little bit of attention just to make sure you're happy with it. Just in case you've had a junior person working in the software. The same applies, so for example here, for this pipe. You might not want it to follow the typical settings, so we can override the material. Maybe it's HTTP, and again, it goes yellow. So you know when you're reviewing the calculations that something's changed there. You can click on it, see what the change is, and uh, you should be happy with it. And that's a, that's a very quick overview of how it all works. But uh, in the next part, we'll, we'll look at the results.